Hey guys, here we have our assessing normality write-up example. So here's something that you may or may not be asked to do on the chapter test for this chapter. Um, there will be AP problems about normality. Um, always there's AP problems about normality and um, on the AP exam it'll probably show up. So I'm going to give you um, quite a few things to be looking at when you are asked to assess normality. So the question here is, do you have reason to believe that the data on these 44 great white shark lengths is approximately normal? So remember that I always use that word approximately very liberally whenever discussing normality is because rarely is anything exactly normal. But um, occasionally you'll get dinged if you don't have the words approximately normal um, written together. You don't want to imply that something is exactly normal. Here's the other thing is that see how this problem, this is page 133, number 63, by the way. Um, do you see how it's broken into A, B, C, and D? That is to help you and guide you and teach you. But you will not be given instructions like that on a test, on the AP, something like that. They're just going to say, do you have reason to believe that the, data, that the data here is approximately normal, yes or no, and why? And so what you want to uh, make sure that you're hitting and make sure that you're paying close attention to is that here is thing number one that you need to look at, the histogram. Thing number two is this empirical rule that we've talked about so much this chapter. And thing number three will be the normal probability plot. Um, those are the three things that you kind of need to have memorized. Okay, if I'm asked to assess whether something's normal or not, I need to do these three things. And then part D kind of summarizes, based on A, B, and C, what did you learn? What do you think? Is it okay to say this is approximately normal or not? Blah, blah, blah. So that's enough of an introduction. What you need to do first is to type all of this data right here into your calculator. Make sure you type those numbers very, very carefully, not to insult anyone's intelligence, but it will screw the entire thing up if you type one of those wrong. Um, and then see if you can go through doing the histogram. Um, what you're going to be asked to do on the test and or on the AP exam is to actually sketch the histogram. What I'm going to do is get it on my calculator and just screenshot it. Obviously, you're going to have to sketch it by hand. You know how to do that um, if this is an actual test question. So go ahead, type the data in and see if you can fumble around and come up with a histogram. So here is some info and what my histogram looked like when I typed this in the calculator. So um, first of all, just to make sure that you typed everything right, check your one variable stats. Here's the X bar, here's the median, here's the standard deviation of the sample. Um, so check that. If you forget how to do that when you're looking at your list in the calculator, what you're doing is you're going up to the calculate option, which is F4. And that's when you want the calculator to calculate all kinds of stuff, obviously. And the very first option is one variable stats. And that'll give you the mean, the median, the mode, the Q3, the Q1, the standard deviation, all of that stuff. Huge list of data that it calculates for you. And um, you have to tell it, though, you have to type in um, list one. You have to tell it you want to li use list one. Later on in the year, when we're using multiple lists at the same time, the calculator will ask you, which list do you want me to calculate the stat statistics for? And you tell it list one. So if your numbers are not what mine are, that means you made an error typing somewhere, probably. But um, if you forget how to do the histogram, the other thing is if you go back into when you're looking at the list that you typed all of those 44 different numbers into, there were 44 sharks that said that in the question, you should have 44 entries into list one. Um, option F2 is plots, and then number one under plots is plot setup. So the calculator is like, well, you want me to make a plot? What do you want me to make a plot of? So go into plot setup, and then all of your plots should be blank. If they're not, you can clear them by just doing that F3. The option of F3 in this menu says clear. So you can just clear them. You might have other lists or something that we've done in class or something you've used for another math class or whatever. So clear all your plots. And then when you have plot 1 um, highlighted, you want to define it. And the plot type, you have all these different options. You can do box plots, you can do a scatter plot. What we want to do here, this question is telling us to do a histogram. So obviously change it to histogram. And then for the x value, tell it to use list 1. Again, you put all of your data in list 1. So that's what the calculator is asking, where is all of your data that you want me to make this graph for. So list 1 is there. And then if you just leave everything else blank, hit OK. Um, and then it takes you back to the plot menu, and then you're going to have to hit F5, which is zoom data, to actually see the graph. And that should look like what mine looks like. So I just wrote a brief like summary 
again, you're not going to be able to actually take a picture of your calculator, obviously, on a test or on the AP exam. You're going to have to sketch that. So all of our sketches might look slightly different. It just depends on what you want the width of all of your bars to be on the x-axis. But I have my histogram appears approximately symmetric. There's not an obvious, very heavy skew in either direction. It is approximately bell-shaped. The mean is about the same as the median. That's why I wrote both of those up there. And I'm always giving values for those numbers whenever possible. And the sample standard deviation is 2.550. That covers spread. So remember, this question is telling us to do, um, what's it saying? To describe the shape, center, and spread of the distribution of sharp links. So shape, center, and spread, I made sure and I covered in there. Um, why does it leave out outliers? You'll actually start to learn that sometimes the AP exam does leave out outliers. You can see that maybe, maybe what you were wondering is, is this an, an outlier and is this an outlier? I think those numbers in the um, T-chart that we typed, I think one of the numbers is 9.4. It's pretty much pretty small compared to all the rest. This one's 22.8. Maybe those are outliers. Maybe they're not. We're not actually sure. We know how to calculate that. It wouldn't be wrong if you went into that detail, but this question does not ask you to do that. So we're skipping outliers altogether. So there it takes care of part one. Now I'm going to go on to part B, um, the percent of observations that fall within one, two, and three standard deviations of the mean. So what I'm going to do um, for part B is I'm going to almost draw like a normal um, sketch. And you know how you put the mean right in the middle, the 15.586. And then I have three standard deviations to the right and three standard deviations to the left. And go ahead and label all of those x values. I'm going to pause the video and do that real quick. All right, so here we go. What I did is I labeled um, the center just like if I were going to actually sketch a normal curve. And I went three standard deviations to the right and three standard deviations to the left and labeled all of them. And you might be wondering what just happened, where did all these numbers come from? So let's take this 16 out of 44 right here. I counted how many um, of these shark lengths up here fell between this number and this number. And there were 16 of them. So it's a little bit tedious, especially because we gave you 44 different shark lengths. Um, so it's tedious to actually count them all off, but this is the process. We've done one of these problems in class, and this is what you're going to have to do for step two in order to assess normality. Remember what we're trying to decide here is, the, are the lengths of all of these approximately normal? So we first checked the histogram. Now we're checking the empirical rule, 68, 95, 99.7. And then lastly, I'll refresh your memory on how to do a normal probability plot. And those are the three different things that we have to do to see if this data is approximately normal or not. So let me go back to where we were here. We've got, um, I calc counted all of those shark lengths and put them into the right categories. Um, just to make sure you got them all, make sure that all of these numerators add up to 44, otherwise you're missing some of the sharks. But remember that empirical rule. So what does the 68, 95, 99.7 actually stand for? So 68% means within one standard deviation of the mean. So in this category right here, we have 30 out of 44 of the sharks um, falling in that category. Is that close to 68% or not? And then when I move out to two standard deviations, I'm taking all of these sharks. Is that close to 95% of our list or not? And then lastly, 99.7 or roughly 100 um, which in this case, the 100% rule, all 100% of the sharks do fall within three standard deviations. So we know that one because I have zero out here and zero out here. So they all fell within 33, um, three standard deviations of the mean. So that is what I'm going to um, start writing out now is actually calculating and seeing how close to the empirical rule this data falls. So um, what I have is that 30 out of 44 which is actually calculates to 68.18% is within one standard deviation of the mean. Um, when you actually add up all of these, you can just subtract the two that are not in there. So 44 minus two is 42. Or you can add them all up by hand. That's a little bit slower, but 42 out of 44 
which actually equates to 95.45 within two standard deviations. And then lastly, um, we have all 44 falling within um, three standard deviations. And so what I want to summarize here is since that 68.18% is very, very close to 68, 42 um, out of 44, which is 95.45, is very, very close to 95. 100 is very, very close to um, 99.7. So these values are all very close. I'm going to write 68.18% is approximately 68%. 95.45% is approximately 95% and 100% is approximately 99.7%. So this thing passes the empirical rule. So all of our percentages are very, very close. Um, and I was very clear in labeling all my work and showing where all the numbers came from, blah, 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 to make sure you get full credit. But this is step number two when assessing normality. So last thing we have to do is go into the normal probability plot. So um, good thing you've already typed all of this data into your calculator because it's going to use that data to do the normal probability plot. So if we want to go back into the calculator and make sure you go back into the app so that you can see all of the numbers that you put into your list. And I'm going to um, go up to plots and remember that option number one is the plot setup. That's how we did the histogram. Well, this is asking you to do a normal probability plot. That's a different number under the F2 option. There's a normal probability plot option. And um, when you click that normal probability plot, which is option two under F2, um, it's defaulting to plot two. And so just remember that we already have a histogram that's being used in plot one. That's why it's defaulting to plot two. That doesn't matter. You can change it to plot whatever number you want, but just remember that the reason why it's not using plot one is because we are already using that. So leave it on plot two. It's asking you what list you have all of your data in, and all of my data is still in list one. You might have to type that, or it might default fill list one. Um, leave data access and mark and that stat var is weird thing. Just leave it all the same. Hit OK. And then it says busy. And then it fills in this weird category of z-scores. That's fine. Nobody cares. Why can't I see a plot? You need to go back into plots and then plot setup, which is option one. And now it shows that plot one and plot two are both being used. So when your calculator said busy for a while, that's just because it um, was thinking and it was calculating all the z-scores. And it actually did a lot of different stuff that we're not even aware of. But we now are using plot one, which is my histogram, which I already did right here. And it now is using plot two. And before I zoom data, do you see how plot one and plot two are both checked? Well, I don't want to see two different graphs on one grid. So I'm going to uncheck plot one because I already did my histogram, I already know what it looks like, I don't want to have to see that again. It's just easier than deleting it, but you should only have plot 2 checked. That's the normal probability plot and that's what I want to see. So once plot 2 is the only one that's checked, hit F5 to zoom the data and you should see your normal probability plot. So after zooming that data on the normal probability plot, what you guys can see down here is that these um, these dots, which remember what the dots actually stand for. So the X values are all of the lengths up here of the um, great white sharks. But remember what the Y values are is that those are Z scores. Remember that's why the normal probability plot took so long to actually calculate those Z scores. And so if those are Z scores, which represent number of standard deviations away from the mean, what these dots together should form is a roughly linear pattern in order to show that we have a roughly or approximately normal um, bell curve here. So that's the third thing that we're checking. The normal probability plot appears to be roughly linear. That means we have no reason to doubt the normality of this data. And so you can also see what I did is I labeled um, A, B, and C for parts A, B, and C here. 
Remember, you won't be prompted to go through these three things. What you're going to have to do is remember that you have to first check the histogram. Then you're going to have to do the empirical rule. And then you're going to have to check the normal probability plot. And you're going to have to sketch this because you won't be able to screenshot what the normal probability plot looks like. So to answer part D, just to summarize, finally, we are getting to the end of the question. Here's what I wrote. Because of our findings in A, B, and C, which I like labeled and clearly um, showed all my work and wrote little notes and pointers and things like that within all of those three sections. Because of our findings in A, B, and C, we have no reason to doubt the normality of the distribution of lengths of 44 great white sharks. So don't just stop at normality. Make sure that you add context into your analysis. We are discussing here lengths of great white sharks. It is reasonable to believe this distribution is approximately normal. Boom, drop the mic. Thank you for watching. Bring your questions to class tomorrow. See you later.